Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host, with another marvelous video. This time, every major boss fight of John Wick explored his most brutal and vicious battles. He is the undisputed king of the assassin world, the man, the myth, the legendary Baba Yaga and John Wick's violent exploits have achieved fairy tale status in the underworld. The John Wick franchise has delved into some of the most exciting fight sequences of all time, and the seasoned hitman has taken down men by the hundreds in his relentless quests. In this video, we'll look to explore some of his iconic boss fights, the times when even the deadliest assassin was challenged. This video will include a chronological order of his duels with the major villains of the franchise, and also some of their capable sidekicks. And if you've loved watching the man in action, stay tuned for a joyride. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Baba Yaga is warmed up and back, the first major fight scene that stamps his authority. This is the fight scene that sets things up nicely, the scene that introduces John Wick's incredible fighting skills. The stage has been set following the killing of his dog by Josef and his men, and the assassin is out for revenge. Josef's father, the Russian crime lord Vigo, sends in a few assassins to nip the threat in the bud, but even he knows that a handful of killers wouldn't stand a chance against Baba Yaga. The men enter John Wick's compound stealthily, but we can see that he's ready for them this time, unlike his fateful last encounter. He's all suited up and prepared with his weapon locked and loaded, and the killers soon find out whom they're up against. The assassins enter his house with pistols fitted with torches, and this only makes them easy targets for John, who's waiting in the shadows. A sudden burst of surprise attack kills the first few assassins, and a few lethal gunshots are all it takes. The scene basically highlights just how good John is, and even though he's outnumbered and outgunned, he overwhelms and eliminates the opponents in a couple of minutes. The shootout follows, and we also get to witness his martial arts skills briefly. Finally, the last of the attackers is taken down with a vicious stabbing, and when a cop arrives and witnesses the carnage, John calmly states that he's just sorting a few things out. The scene is also a good reminder of the authority John Wick holds because we see the cop walk away with no further questions and it lays the groundwork for the mayhem that's about to follow. The nightclub scene during the hunt for Joseph. Winston, the manager of the Continental Hotel and John Wick's trusted friend, informs the assassin about Joseph's location, and John heads to the Red Circle nightclub to get his revenge. He infiltrates the nightclub quite easily, and threatens one of Joseph's henchmen to find out that he's currently in the bathhouse. He is also quick to identify the henchman as one among the group that killed his dog and stole his car, and John gives him a painful death by forcing his head down into a water-filled sink till he suffocated. He then heads into the inner sanctum of this private nightclub, and Joseph secures proves to be no more than a distraction for the pro hitman. It's a brilliant scene, where those monitoring the CCTV footage fail to realize that some of their positions aren't answering back because they've been silenced by John Wick's version of justice. Josef is in the giant bathtub along with his friends, and he watches in horror as John Wick picks out his men for elimination. One by one. There's a brief moment where John has a clear chance to shoot Joseph dead, but he chooses to leave him for the last. The idea is probably to make him fear death before it comes for him. But a petrified Joseph manages to escape in his towels as more of his henchmen join the fight. We get to see some more of John's martial arts skills, and the times when he locks and loads during a fight are pretty badass to watch. One of the better fighters among Joseph's henchmen, Kirill, engages John longer than the others and even manages to injure him. Meanwhile, Joseph gets away in a car, and we realize that the fight is being held back for later. John Wick heads back to the Continental to get some treatment for his injuries, but he lives to fight another day. Miss Perkins, the ambitious assassin, is subdued. Miss Perkins is the mysterious assassin who tries her luck to win the bounty put on John Wick's head by Vigo. After the nightclub massacre, Vigo realizes that his son, Joseph, stays unnumbered if John isn't eliminated, and he lures Miss Perkins with an even bigger reward for breaking the fundamental rules of no violence on Continental Hotel grounds. She breaks into his room as he's resting after receiving some treatment for injuries, but unknown to her, John's old friend Marcus alerts him with a sniper shot right beside his head. It's an amusing fight scene that follows, where John evades the multiple shots fired by Miss Perkins and makes use of his bandages to disarm her. She proves to be quite a capable fighter and gives an injured John Wick quite a hard time before he finally pins her down. 
It's an interesting takedown as John wraps the bedsheets around her head and throws a few punches to force her into surrendering. He then hands over her custody to one of his old assassin friends named Harry in the adjacent room. But later, Miss Perkins manages to kill Harry and escape. Eventually, she's tracked down by Winston and his men and executed for violating continental rules. But she ends up being quite a badass assassin in the franchise. John's memorable fight back in captivity. There's a brief moment in the first John Wick movie where the titular assassin is briefly cornered. After destroying Vigo's cache of wealth and precious documents in his secret church location, John attacks Vigo and his men. However, he's hit by Kirill's car, the same man who had injured him in the nightclub. He's taken captive, but Vigo does a crucial main villain mistake, doesn't kill John when he has the chance. In fact, he provokes the assassin further, suggesting that John actually enjoys being a part of this violent world contrary to what he might like to believe. Vigo also lands a few lusty blows as a revenge for destroying his precious hideout. Before leaving the premises, he orders two of his men to kill John, and they wrap a plastic bag around his head as he remains tied to a chair. Marcus offers crucial help in this hour of need, and he hits the bullseye with his sniper, which takes down one of the two men. That's enough assistance for John, and he finally settles his scores with Kirill after choking him to death. He then runs out after Vigo's car and forces him into submission. Vigo is helplessly held at gunpoint and gives up the secret location of his son in return for his life. Joseph's fate is sealed, the safe house massacre. Joseph might have gotten lucky in the last time around, but the final showdown is just about to settle the deal. John learns about his hideout in a safe house which is guarded by Vigo's finest men. Of course, that's not going to deter a vengeful man with the skills of John Wick. He infiltrates the compound, takes down one of the snipers and takes position with the rifle. Joseph is inside a room where his friend is playing a video game, and it's a shocking scene as a bullet from John's sniper makes it game over for him prematurely. A terrified Joseph watches helplessly as his security forces are taken down by John's accurate shooting, and the assassin also triggers a few explosions in their cars to prevent Joseph from escaping this time. Finally, he tracks down Joseph, immobilizes him with a shot, and walks down to him like death himself. Joseph tries to utter the words, It was just a dog, before John puts a final bullet in his head and ends his miseries. Famous last words said to someone who's lost his beloved dog. John's duel with Vigo, the final fight scene of John Wick. The game doesn't end after the killing of Joseph because John has to settle scores with Vigo for killing his old friend, Marcus. Winston informs the hitman about Vigo's plans to leave the city, and John hunts him down just as he's about to get into a helicopter. This fight scene is brief but impactful, and the viewer is quite surprised by the old crime lord's fighting skills. John manages to mortally wound Vigo after stabbing him with a dagger, but not before getting injured himself. And it's an iconic moment as the two men sit back with a torrential downpour washing away the vengeful climax. John walks away and resigns to his fate, before an old video of his late wife on his phone inspires him to get back up on his feet and live for her memories. He adopts a pit bull from a shelter, and he clearly wants to resume a new life. Mr. Wick. John Wick recovers his car from Vigo's brother. John Wick Chapter 2 doesn't waste any time in getting straight into the action, and we see John is back to retrieve his stolen Ford Mustang from Vigo's brother, Abram Tarasov. He is not as silly or brave as his late brother, and he's shown telling his assistant about the legends of Baba Yaga, the deadliest assassin in the underworld. Meanwhile, John goes on a violent rampage and eliminates most of his men, before finally walking into his room. However, he shows no intention of killing Abram, and makes a promise of peace if it's reciprocated. The two men agree to end hostilities, and John Wick walks away after having a drink with the brother of his sworn enemy. This short encounter is quite important because it highlights the importance of mutual respect and upholding agreements in this business. John vs. Cassian on the streets of Rome After assassinating Santino's sister Gianna, as demanded by the former using his blood oath marker, John is hunted down by her trusted bodyguard Cassian. Meanwhile, Santino has also sent out his assassins to eliminate John to keep Gianna's murder mystery a hushed affair. In the streets of Rome, John Wick has barely dealt with Santino's assassins when Cassian hits him with a car. 
A brief shootout follows, followed by a fist fight, where Cassian clearly has the upper hand because John is injured. They fall down some hundreds of flights of stairs and indulge in an intense duel before smashing through the doors of the Continental Hotel in Rome. Both men respect the rule of no violence on Continental grounds, and they share a drink during which John reveals his compulsion in Gianna's killing. Cassian understands the circumstances, but even he is duty-bound and must exact revenge for the murder. He promises John a quick death in their next encounter before leaving the hotel and Julius, the manager of Continental Rome arranges a safe passage for John back to New York. This scene makes the viewer respect Cassian just as much as John because at the end of the day, they're both dutiful and fair men who respect the rules of the fight. John and Cassian's final showdown. This time around, John and Cassian face off in a public place, which makes their duel all the more difficult and intense. It's quite a moment as John tries to get away and walk into a subway station, and the two men exchange shots fired from their silencer-fitted guns. The people walking around have no idea about this shootout, but both John and Cassian emerge unhurt. John is also fighting the assassin sent out by Santino, who double-crossed him, and finally he walks into a train. Cassian follows and the two close the distance between them and wait for an important station where almost all the passengers get off. Cassian attacks John with a knife and even injures him during the fight, but the seasoned assassin knows far too many tricks to outwit Cassian. After a brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat, John stabs him with his own dagger and plunges the blade right into his aorta. He then gets off the train with a word of advice. Pulling out the dagger would mean certain death for Cassian because he'd bleed out. An immobilized Cassian sits in the train helplessly, and a victorious John heads out to face further trouble down the road. Santino's bodyguard Ares puts up a brief resistance. Ares, the mute assassin played by Ruby Rose, is the trusted bodyguard of Santino, and she sticks by his side till the very end. What makes her final encounter with John Wick so interesting is the hatred she harvested for the man throughout the movie. She'd previously failed to get the job done when John Wick got the better of her men, and now when Santino is cornered by the hitman in an art exhibition, she decides to give it one last shot. She ensures a safe passage out of the building for Santino, and emerges with daggers drawn, prepared to fight. John Wick. Never bring a knife to a gunfight, especially when your opponent is John Wick. She is fierce and quick, and for a hundred-pound assassin, she packs quite a punch. However, John eventually gets the better of her, and she's stabbed in the heart. As she sits motionless, she signals to John that she'd be seeing him again, which is a great example of her spirited nature. Ares was an absolute badass, and she surely has our respect for being the loyal and courageous fighter that she was. I'm back! John kills Santino, the assassination that changes everything. Santino is easily one of the most hated characters in the entire franchise, paralleled only by Vincent de Gramont in the recent release. He's not a man of ethics and doesn't shy away from killing his sister in order to sit on the council of the high table. He betrays John Wick after the latter performs his duties, and finally, when Santino is killed, it's a rather satisfying moment for the viewers. That being said, it's also a crucial moment in the franchise, which puts John Wick at odds with the entire high table organization. After realizing that all his finest men have been slaughtered by the Baba Yaga of the assassin world, Santino retreats back to the Continental Hotel grounds, hoping to find safety there because of the hotel rules. John is far too disgusted by now to care about trivial continental laws, and he shoots him dead in the hotel lounge. Winston tries his best to persuade John to not kill him there, but it doesn't work and the manager realizes the gravity of what John has just done. It eventually results in John being declared excommunicado, but Winston delays the declaration by an hour to help him get away. It starts the vicious cycle of the assassin taking on the high table's authority, which has continued till the events of John Wick, Chapter 4. John and Sophia take down the entire gang of Barada. John Wick Chapter 3 is often highlighted for the titular assassin's vicious duels with Zero, played by Mark de Cascos, but this is one of the meanest fight scenes of the franchise. Sophia is one of John's old acquaintances, and he reaches out to her so that she can arrange a meeting with Barada, her previous boss. Sophia reluctantly agrees because of a previous blood oath, and she takes John to meet the crime lord. The duo is accompanied by two mean Belgian Malinois hounds, and things take a drastic turn when Barada demands one of them in return for the information that he provided. Sophia is not willing to give up one of her beloved dogs, and Barada nonchalantly shoots one of the dogs following the refusal. Luckily, the bullet hits the bulletproof vest on the dog, 
but it's enough to rile up a dog lover. Sophia starts a fight, and John Wick joins in, and together they take down Barada's entire gang. The fierce and well-trained dogs make quick work of Barada and many of his henchmen, and Sophia and John offer a brilliant display of marksmanship and martial arts. The body count piles up significantly in this scene, and it's incredible to watch the understanding between the two as they fight as a team. Eventually, all of them manage to escape unhurt after laying waste to Barada's crime empire, and John can finally pursue his mission of having a meeting with the Elder, the leader of the High Table. Sophia, played by Halle Berry, continues to be a fan favorite, and there are demands to bring the character back in future John Wick projects. A martial arts exhibition, John vs. Zero and his students. A cinematic fight scene between Keanu Reeves and Mark Dacascos is always a math-watering prospect for the martial arts fans, and the two do not disappoint when the opportunity presents itself. Mark Dacascos plays the role of Zero, an assassin hired by the adjudicator to punish John Wick for his disobedience. The first encounter sees John Wick almost politely being led by Zero students from a public place to face off against Zero. When some kids on a field trip come between them, they both refrain from attacking, and John John uses the opportunity to stab one of Zero's students to death. He then deceives them all and gets away, and it eventually leads to a nail-biting bike chase sequence. High-speed bikes, bullets fired, and swords drawn, it all boils down to many of Zero's men falling. Zero and John crash onto the pavement in front of the Continental Hotel, and John's old friend Sharon interrupts their fighting by reminding them of Continental laws. Zero almost behaves like a fanboy during their brief interaction in the Continental Hotel lounge. Later, even his best students show a similar behavior, which indicates their utmost respect for John Wick. They're all men who crave a fair fight, and they don't kill an opponent when they're helpless and defenseless. Zero students even suggest mid-fight that it's an honor to fight him. The final fight scene between John Wick and Zero is the cherry on top for the movie, and this takes place after John immobilizes two of his best students. Zero is impressed by John's insane skills, and they display a wonderful martial arts exhibition as they take on each other. Finally, when Zero is almost forced into submission, he refuses to give up and ends up being impaled by a fine sword. He still has his humor intact and doesn't fail to remind John that it was a pretty good fight. John and Sharon take apart the High Table forces. The adjudicator was appointed by the High Table to bring everyone who defied the organization to justice. When John Wick refused to keep his promise made to the Elder and stated that he wouldn't kill Winston, the adjudicator deconsecrates the hotel grounds and sends in a team of highly trained assassins to eliminate everyone. Sharon and John Wick lead the defenses, and the two manage to bring down the entire force. The scenes where John and Sharon wield a shotgun and pierce the bulletproof armor of the mercenaries are absolutely delightful. This scene also reveals the true fighting skills of Sharon, who has until now been perceived as a fine professional gentleman. The defeat is so impactful that it forces the adjudicator to call for a truce. The following segment will have some major spoilers from the recent release, so if you haven't watched the movie already, now might be the time to look away. Of others, the first of which will be the man they call Winston. John Kills the Elder. John Wick Chapter 4 begins with a bang. For someone who's the leader of the High Table, the worldwide organization that monitors and regulates crime, the Elder didn't really put up much of a fight. John Wick tracks him down in the middle of the Moroccan desert and takes down his men during a brief horseback duel. He walks up to the Elder who seems to have accepted his fate and doesn't offer any resistance. John Wick swiftly puts a bullet in his head and takes his opposition with the high table to the next level. You know things are about to turn worse when a movie begins with the death of someone who is technically the most powerful man in the John Wick universe. Me too. Blind Assassin Kane turns out to be John Wick's deadliest opponent. The assassins hired by the high table to kill John Wick keep getting better, and the blind Assassin Kane, played by Donnie Yen, is probably the best among the lot. He's an old friend of John, but they're all professionals, and Kane is forced to become a part of this mission after Vincent de Gramont suggests that his refusal might endanger his daughter's life. Meanwhile, John heads to the Osaka Continental, and he's briefly sheltered by another old friend, Koji, who prepares to risk everything to protect John. Kane soon comes calling along with an army of high-table mercenaries, and a fierce battle breaks out in the Continental premises after Osaka Continental is deconsecrated for sheltering John. Koji and his daughter Akira join forces with John to lead a fight back, but it's a losing battle and John is allowed to escape after a brief encounter with Kane. Koji fights Kane until his last breath, and the blind assassin shows just how good he is by having the upper hand in this brief combat scene with John. Throughout the movie, Kane and John face off on multiple occasions, but there are also times when Kane saves his life. 
life. Just like the previous respected assassins in the franchise, Kane plays by the rules and prefers to fight ethically. <laughs> what about you, Mr. Vic? I'm going to kill you. John meets his match in Killer, the surprise package in John Wick Chapter 4. A morbidly obese crime lord with three golden teeth and a comical appearance isn't exactly what one would perceive as a threat. However, the character of Killer, played by Scott Adkins, proves to be an exception. John is assigned the task to kill him in order to become a member of the Rusko Roma crime family, which would allow him to challenge Vincent de Gramont to a duel. Killer seems to be quite the character, and the scene lights up because Kane and Mr. Nobody also join the action. After a fraudulent card game, Killer is attacked by John, but the assassin soon realizes that the crime lord is far deadlier than he looks. As John follows him into a nightclub, there are some grand fight sequences featuring the two as the others in the nightclub dance away. John takes quite a severe beating, and the audience finds out about the brute strength of this giant. Minor injuries sustained in this battle hardly seem to bother Keeler, and there is a moment when he throws John Wick from the second floor of the nightclub. Eventually, plot armor comes to the protection of John, and he lands the killing blow. This brief but entertaining fight scene is one of the most loved moments from the new movie. Movie, and Scott Adkins in a fat suit is a sight to behold. John Wick vs. Mr. Nobody, the enemy that he wins over. There aren't many people who get a clear opportunity to shoot John Wick dead, but the mysterious assassin in John Wick Chapter 4, Mr. Nobody, aka The Tracker, has quite a few of these. His face-offs with John Wick are quite interesting because Mr. Nobody has no personal grudge against the man. He simply wants the significant bounty on his head, and there's nothing that's going to stop him, well, except the love for his dog. There is a crucial moment where John Wick ends up saving the life of The Tracker's beloved dog, and he can never bring himself to kill John after that. In fact, he even helps John in reaching the dueling venue by battling the hordes of assassins sent by Vincent de Gramont. Previously in the movie, Mr. Nobody had a clear shot at John, but he was interrupted by Kane, who wanted to do the job himself. A brief fight with John Wick proved that he indeed had the potential to trouble the Baba Yaga of the underworld. Luckily for John, his love for dogs comes in handy and saves his life. John gets his revenge on Vincent de Gramont was the final duel between John Wick and Kane pre-planned. There are plenty of indications that suggest John Wick and Kane might have staged the whole thing. Firstly, Kane and John aren't enemies in the conventional sense of the term. They have nothing against each other, and on the contrary, it's been revealed that they're old friends. Kane is forced into the mission by Vincent de Gramont after he threatens the security of his daughter, and he still helped John a few times when the outcome didn't concern him. The final duel between Kane and John is cinematic brilliance, and it also hints toward the possibility of a pre-planned agreement, where John agreed not to kill him in order to get his revenge on Vincent. The duel is supposed to have three rounds, during each of which the distance between the two would continue to grow shorter. In the first round, both of them make a non-fatal hit, and it's almost the same in the second, although John's wound seems to be more serious than that of Kane. For the third round, Kane fires his shot, but John refrains from pulling the trigger. As John lies fatally wounded, Vincent de Gramont is delighted and takes up the mantle from Kane to land the finishing blow. He has no clue that John is holding back the bullet just for him, and the seasoned assassin shoots his brains out. It's another extremely satisfying moment for the John Wick fans after the deaths of Joseph and Santino in previous movies. As Kane bids him a final goodbye, John reminds him that Kane owes him one, which is probably because he didn't shoot Kane fatally. Also, we find it hard to believe that marksmen like John and Kane failed to shoot each other dead in the very first exchange. Whatever the case, it was surely a wonderful contest to watch, and we loved this dramatic encounter as well as the satisfying outcome. Apart from these major boss-level fights, John Wick has also been challenged by several small-time assassins looking to make the big bucks, but he prevails every single time. Do let us know in the comments below which one among these is your favorite moment from the franchise. Tell us about your thoughts on the path ahead for the legendary assassin in the series. Yeah.